In order to properly document your design, you need to ensure that every component in the design is properly scheduled or tagged. Also, most tags indicate a mark which can be used to reference that component in a schedule. In Revit, this is very useful because a parameter that is used in a schedule and a tag will be the same in both locations. If you change the parameter in the schedule, it would update in the tag as well. To begin tagging elements, I'll switch to the Annotate ribbon and select Tag by Category from the Tag panel. The ribbon changes to the Modify Tag Contextual ribbon. You can then move into the Drawing area and begin tagging elements. For example, when you hover your cursor over an element, you can see a preview of the tag. To place the tag, simply click. The controls in the Options bar control whether the tag will be placed horizontally or vertically. You can also select whether or not to include a leader. With leader selected, you can select Attached End or Free End to control the end of the leader line. You can also specify the length of the leader line. The Tags button displays the Loaded Tags dialog, and you can see which tags have been loaded into the project, or click Load to load additional tags. I'll click Cancel to close the dialog. I'll continue tagging the components. Once I'm satisfied, I'll click Modify to end the command. Typically, tags to indicate duct size and mechanical equipment are easy to understand with only the necessary information. However, there are several varieties of air terminal tags that firms like to use. Also, you may wish to add more information to tags to use in working views to aid in the design process. Let's look at how you can modify a tag. I'll select the Air Terminal tag and then choose Edit Family in the Contextual ribbon. Once I do, the family opens in the Family Editor. In the Drawing area, I'll select the text on top. Realize that this is actually a label as can be seen in the Contextual ribbon. I'll click Edit Label in the Contextual ribbon to open the Edit Label dialog. Here, you can select any of the available category parameters to use in the tag. To add a new parameter, click Add Parameter under the Category Parameters list. As you can see, the parameter type must be a shared parameter. Shared parameters are stored in an external text file and can be referenced by both family and project files. It is important to have a company shared parameter file with all of the parameters that will be needed for schedules and tags across all three disciplines. Only one shared parameter file can be used in a project or family file. I'll click Cancel to close this dialog. Since air terminals are typically referenced by their type and not every single instance in the project, I'll highlight the row in the Label Parameters section and choose Remove Parameter from Label. Then I'll select Type Mark in the Category Parameters list and choose Add Parameter to Label. Now when this tag is loaded into the project, the label will reference the type mark of the element. If needed, you could add additional parameters to the label. I'll click OK to close the dialog. Then I'll select the bottom label and click Edit Label in the Contextual ribbon. As you can see, this label references the flow. This is what I want, so I'll click OK. Now I'll switch to the Create ribbon and click Line to start the Line tool. You can use any of the tools in the Draw panel to sketch lines. I'll pick Ellipse and create an ellipse around the parameters. Then I'll click Modify to end the command. Next, I'll select the existing line and extend each end to the ellipse by dragging the end controls. 
Lastly, I'll select a label, click Edit Type in the Properties palette, and change the background to Transparent. Then I'll click OK. Now I have a tag that looks better than the standard tag. In the ribbon, I'll select Load into Project. In the Family Already Exists dialog, I'll select Overwrite the existing version. Back in the project, the new tag is loaded, but I can see that the error terminals do not have a type mark specified. To enter a type mark, select an error terminal and then click Edit Type in the Properties palette. In the Type Properties dialog, you can enter a type mark under Identity Data for each error terminal type in the project. For this type, I'll enter A and then click OK. Now when I create a schedule, I can use the type mark to indicate each error terminal.